hello <laughs> welcome to my perspective um i did warn you this morning that i might be late but actually it's only four minutes past 10 so i feel like i've done really well to get here for this time um and uh yeah so welcome it's lovely to be here with you um our uh reading today is uh, the reading uh, that tells about Jesus in the wilderness from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. In those days, Jesus came up from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. <clears throat> so I pray, Lord, that um, my perspective on these verses will be helpful to those who hear them and uh, that my words will glorify your name. Amen. So I wonder if you've ever been to a wilderness place. I have to admit that I haven't, but the idea of the wilderness fascinates me. I think I probably watched a few too many episodes of Grizzly Adams when I was a little girl. I'm not so excited by the idea of the desert, although maybe I'd like to see the Grand Canyon, but I love the idea of visiting the frozen wastes of Alaska. Maybe it's because I was a December baby. I just love the snow. But I don't think I'd like it to be snowy winter all the time, like in Narnia before Aslan's reign where it's always winter and never Christmas. The wilderness is a pretty inhospitable place and not very much is able to live there. And even if you could live there, you almost certainly wouldn't want to. The wilderness is a place that you travel through mainly out of necessity than choice. When I was in Calais, I uh, met with a lovely young man, a refugee, and I was quite taken by uh, his story of how he came to be in Calais. And at first, I didn't quite believe it when he told me he'd walked through the Sahara Desert. Um, but when I uh, did some further investigations, it was in fact true. He had walked through the Sahara Desert to eventually get to Calais because the wilderness is a place that you travel through. So I might like the look of the frozen wastes of Alaska. I might have very romantic notions of polar bears and the aurora borealis. But actually, the reality of minus 40 degree temperatures is not so appealing. In a way, we've had to make our home in the wilderness this last year, haven't we, during the pandemic and lockdown, or at least get a little bit comfortable with our strange new surroundings. But I doubt that anybody would want to stay here. We all want to get to the other side as quickly as possible. Interestingly, when wilderness is mentioned in the Bible, it's often associated with measured chronological time, numbers of days or years. So Noah's 40 days and nights in the flooded wastes, the people of Israel's 40 year journey through the wilderness to the promised land. And now Jesus in this passage today spends 40 days and nights uh, in, the tempter, in the wilderness being tempted. And it's strange, I think, this chronological measurement of time because the wilderness really is a place where time stands still because nothing really grows and nothing really changes there are not like seasons like there would be you know in in um, a lush fertile place 
it seems to exist outside of time and yet in the bible the wilderness it is subject to this chronological measurement again and again wilderness in the bible is chronos time honestly i think wilderness has to be chronos time because as we've already established we can't survive there indefinitely there has to be a limit to it and as a biblical precedent i find this really encouraging time in the world wilderness is measured but it's measured because it's limited we might have to travel through and it might take a while but we're not destined to remain there so i wonder if you find this to be true of your own wilderness experiences like everyone else i've had my time in the wilderness and in particular, I suffered really badly with postnatal depression after the birth of my second son 16 years ago. And it was so severe that it was at least several years before I fully recovered. But I did recover. I traveled through that wilderness. When you're in the middle of that wilderness experience, though, it doesn't feel like a journey, does it? It feels like a prison, like you'll be there forever, like nothing will ever change. And it's incredibly hard to hold on to hope. I don't know about you, but sometimes I felt like that over the last year of the pandemic and resulting lockdowns. I felt like I was in some kind of nightmarish groundhog day. And just when things seemed to be improving, <laughs> COVID-19 cases would rise or a new variant would emerge and we'd be back to square one again. So there was a necessity for the sake of mental well-being really to find things to embrace in that time, to get a little bit comfortable, to make the wilderness of the lockdown our home. But the wilderness is not meant to be our home. We're meant to pass through it. And even though, even while we're passing through, we will be tested just like Jesus. Because when we're in the wilderness with no visible means of support, we're presented with a choice, aren't we? We can either trust God, trust that he'll bring us through to the other side, or we can trust in our own resources. That really has been the story of my lockdown, my... Um, difficulty in making the right choice this it was the test the real test of my lockdown because i like to be in control i like to know exactly what's going to happen and when i like to be the person who gets to decide that if i'm really honest i like to be in control of my own destiny do destiny and in lockdown that was taken away from me i, I couldn't make decisions like, like that I tried really hard as well to get it back. And to be honest, I was even happy to embrace destruction. If, if it was destruction that I was responsible for. So I would almost mess things up on purpose just because I'd done that. No one else had done it. I'd done it. The wilderness destroys our illusions of self-sufficiency. All our usual tools for dealing with life's challenges are gone. We're suddenly impotent and powerless. So how do we respond? Well, we can grasp onto those illusions of control, the grit teeth and white knuckles, or we can trust in God. And I can tell you from bitter experience that the farmer approach really doesn't work. In the end, I had no option but to trust God during the lockdown because I made such a hash of things trying to be in control and make my own path that literally he was the only person who could untangle my mess. Even when we're in the middle of seemingly interminable wilderness times, we're never alone. And when we need him, God will puncture the chronos, the chronological time with Kairos. Kairos is God time. It's moments of divine inbreaking. We'll never be alone. Just like the angels attended on Jesus, God will be there. I sometimes wonder if our wilderness times happen to remind us that the earth, this earth as it is now, is not really our home. 
that we're so sojourners passing through and that one day we will live fully in Kairos time in God's kingdom. There's a danger though, isn't there, that while we wait, we can get too attached to our life in the here and now and we forget about eternity. We become obsessed with worldly stuff, cars, dresses, home, home improvements, holidays, entertaining ourselves with the wonders of modern media. There's so much here, isn't there, to tempt and test us and entice us away from our path. For me, it's new dresses, mainly. Now, I don't want you to think here that I'm embracing Gnosticism, the heresy that matter is essentially bad, because God made the world and he declared that it was good. It was because he loved the world so much that he sent his son and eventually the earth will be redeemed and will become the fulfillment of his kingdom. Our life is a gift, a blessing that we should joyfully embrace and use for good, but it's not our eternal blessing. And the wilderness perhaps gives us a glimpse of how it will compare to the life that is to come. If you're feeling overwhelmed by this wilderness time that we're currently living through, and I don't know about you, but to me, having a potential end to insight makes it all suddenly much harder to bear. Or if you're struggling through your own personal wilderness that is just exacerbated by the pandemic, take heart. Because wilderness time is chronos time. It is measured and finite. We are here in wilderness time as so sojourners. We were not meant for this place. We were meant for life in all its fullness. And this too shall pass. But when we're through the other side, I want you to remember this, that our lives with all their beauty and joy and love and abundance are a mere shadow of the life that is to come. In terms of eternity, this is Kronos time. This is the wilderness. And one day we shall come out of the other side and be in Kairos in God's time with God. There'll be no more crying or pain or sorrow. So use your life well. Stand up to the test that it sends you. Don't be swayed from your path. Enjoy the gifts that God has given you, but don't get too comfortable because this place is not our home. Amen. Um, as always, uh, when we uh, do my perspective, I've got some questions for you to ponder on, uh, which I will put in the comments afterwards. So, well, can you identify times in your life that has felt have felt like a wilderness? How did you get through those times? What do you think about the idea that the earth in its current form is not a forever home that we're just passing through to somewhere better what do you make of that and if you believe it to be true what comfort does it give you and how should it inspire you to live your life some things to ponder there i'm just going to finish with a short prayer and uh, and then we'll say the grace together God, our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you that you are always with us in the good times and the bad, in the times where we are in the lush paradise and the times when we are in the wilderness. We are never alone. Help us to trust you, to trust that you are always with us and even when things are difficult and it feels like a wilderness, that we can trust you to bring us through to the other side. And Lord, help us to know that however difficult this life might be at times, there is a life to come which has no sorrow or pain or crying, no evil and we will be with you always. 
thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the life that you've given us here. Help us to use it, to use it to your glory, to enjoy it and to love and live, help others. But Lord, help us to know that it's not the end. Let us not live our lives in fear, but in reassurance and knowledge that our life will go on forever with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Uh, Reverend Dan will be here tonight at 8 o'clock with night prayer. I'll be back tomorrow morning with morning prayer at 8. And uh, we're heading towards the weekend, aren't we? So don't forget to tune in to our Sunday service on our Facebook page at 10. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye.